Well, hello and welcome back. And boy, we have a jam-packed episode this week. Well, of course, we're going to continue with our little Toyota FJ43. Last episode, we did the unboxing and the construction. And this episode, well, <laughs> I think I did a little more than I was anticipating. We're going to paint the model. We're going to build a small base. We're going to resurrect one of my old figures from the dead. And we'll put the whole little scene together. So <laughs> to say we have a lot to do, well, that would be kind of an understatement. So let's get moving on with this. Well, first things first, we need to fill up and make messy and cluttered up the cargo bed of this vehicle. From the reference photographs that we were working with, you could see that these were just jam packed full of all sorts of different si supplies and personal gear and, and whatever. So we need to do that here to make it look a little bit, let's say more lived in. And the basis for this is some nice value gear resin pieces. So it's just a matter of going through my little stash of parts here and finding what fits here and there and just kind of, you know, doing a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle here, see what fits, what doesn't fit. Yep, that's looking pretty good right now. Something like this, I think that's gonna look just fine. And then just to add into some of those emptier spaces and just kind of fill it up just a little bit more, I'm gonna roll out a little bit of magic sculpt here and we've done this before, so a little magic sculpt, two-part putty. Use baby powder as a non-stick, makes my place smell very nicely. Roll it out until it's super thin and then you can just fold it up into little blankets or roll it up into little bed rolls or anything like that and just place it onto your models. Give it, you know, I don't know, um, depending on how, how you do your mix, you know, an hour to maybe two hours to fully cure and dry and get nice and hard so you can continue to move on. Once you get to that point where it's stiff at least, at least on this bag here, let's go ahead and this is the nice part about using Magic Sculpt and, and do, making your own parts is that you can drape them around exactly how you want them to fit into your, your models. And so that gives it a little bit more of that natural lived in feeling. And then one of the things I did is I glued together a number of these different parts. So they're little sub assemblies. And so once everything cures in place here, then I'll pull these out and I have these little painting sub assemblies I can just stick right back into the bed of the truck. And here's what it looks like as it spins around, suitably kind of cluttered up and It'll look better once it gets painted because then we'll have a lot of little color pops. Well, speaking of color pops, let's get on with the painting here. <laughs> and let's do a little bit of warm up on something that doesn't matter quite so much. So we'll take the recoilless gun, just spray it with a little bit of green color. These are real colors here, AK real colors. And then for the vehicle itself, uh, I first started out with Mr. Surfacer on the gray side, but then I thought, you know what, it's going to be a light colored vehicle, so I think I might, might want to go ahead and use the Mr. Surfacer white or the 1000, and I think that was a better choice. Next up, well, the vehicle has a base color. This is basically the Toyota, you know, off the showroom floor, kind of off light tan, off white light sand, whatever you want to call this color, and I actually looked it up, see if I could come up with some sort of a, a color reference, but of course, you know, that if you're an auto body shop, they gave you the color codes, but if you're just a hobbyist, well, you're, you're kind of out of luck there. But I mixed up something that looks uh, reasonably close. And then next up are the camouflage stripes, and once again, just kind of doing this by eye, again, real colors here, just a mix of colors, and I'll put the colors into the, into the sliders here, so you'll be able to see what colors I used, and just a random camouflage pattern here it's it's you know there's a couple of i found references for a number of vehicles that have this basic two-toned uh, camouflage with the darker color red brown with the black outlines and they're all different so basically your imagination run wild you could do whatever you want the most difficult part of this camouflage and this this is where i wish i had a steadier hand is those little black outlines and Ah, some days are easier than others, and this was not one of the easy days for me. Um, I don't know why. I just could not hold my hand steady and just was having a hard time getting around those corners. But that's okay, because we're going to be able to clean it up just a little bit later. Well, the next step was a little light coat of hairspray, because I want to add a little distress to the surface. So just, just by hand, just squirt a little bit of the hairspray, a couple of light coats, let that dry for about, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. And then I remix my light cam or my light base color. So this is the Toyota light sand, and it's a little bit lighter shade than the previous shade. And with this, I'm just kind of over spraying all the panels in between, more or less in between the camouflage splotches. But it's okay if I wander over the top of the camouflage as well, because this is a light color, so it almost simulates dust. And re really what I'm looking to do here is distress the entire surface 
a little bit. And if I chip back a little bit of the color over the top of the camouflage, well, this is a little bit of dust speckling or something like that. And then on certain areas, I get a little bit more aggressive and just add, you know, a few scratches here and there using the toothpick, just little sharper edges. This is certainly one of those back and forth processes, believe me. So we'll, we'll go revisit this a number of times. Well, let me take just a quick time out here because I need to say thank you to my patrons because, of course, those are the folks who picked out the camouflage scheme for this project. So thanks, guys. It looks really, really nice. If you do like this project and you like this channel and would like a little bit more content, consider joining Patreon. Over there, we have a Discord server. We have a lot of chats going on. So if you like a little bit more, I encourage you to check it out. The link is in the description below. So once I have the paint on, I can come back and take care of a few things that I just skipped over in the first round of construction. Things like the headlights, the reflectors, the taillights, things like that. And I can add them onto the model. And then one of the references submitted by the Patreon were had this vehicle, one of the vehicles that had a replacement bumper that was a dark green. This really stood out nicely, so I wanted to incorporate that on this vehicle. And then it's just taking some time with the paints and the paintbrush and starting picking out some of the details. Now, if you recall, we did a little bit of the hairspray chipping, but that was mostly just to distress the, the paint itself, not to necessarily go down to, say, the primer layer. In certain areas, I did want to go down to the primer layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that the old-fashioned way. A little bit of gray paint here on the paintbrush, a nice fine paintbrush, and just start adding those in all those little high wear areas here. And that just kind of brings a little bit more life and personality to a little bit of the story behind this vehicle. Yep, they took a beating. And then of course, next up, well, what would this, what would a Rick project be without moving towards oils? And so that's the rest of the weathering is going to be all with the oil paints here. If you look over to the side there, you can see my palette choices are fairly limited. A lot of sand tones and a little bit darker brown tones. And it's just a matter of kind of really just making it a little bit more, I don't know what would be the right word, <laughs> uh, well used, well loved vehicle. So Distressing some of those colors, adding some darker tones here and there, adding some dust tones here and there. Um, not a lot of heavy weathering. Of course, there's not going to be a lot of mud on this because, well, you know, we're in Libya. And, you know, yes, it does rain from time to time. But most of these vehicles are just, they're basically clean. They just are dusty and banged up. Well, speaking of painting, we, of course, need to take care of all that stowage that's in the back of the truck. So I think the easiest way to do that would be just to give everything a nice primer layer of flat black just to take care of all those different shadows and things like that. Make sure everything is covered nicely. And of course, I've got the front seats here. So I've given them a color, a brown color overspray. And then I'm just going to give them the wear, kind of upholstered, worn upholstered appearance using the brush. Just kind of tap some of those wear marks there along that, along those. Make them very nice and well loved, as they say. And then just kind of plop those into place. Push that down there. And now we have our front seats. And now we're doing pretty good. And like I said, if you like this channel, you know, hit that like and subscribe button. It does help it get to more and more people. And I really would appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Now turning my attention to the stowage gear all in the back of the vehicle there. This is all going to be hand painted. Of course, we, like I said, we just pre-painted that with the black just to make sure we have the, all the shadows all covered up. And then it's just pick a color and <laughs> you'll notice throughout the rest of this episode here, I will change colors from time to time. I'll put two colors together, think it's right. And then I'll start adding the stowage or a little bit later with the figure. And it's like, oh, this is just not going to work. So I'll change colors. So don't be surprised if you see a piece that's Used to be one color and is another. But here's the beauty of gluing these little parts, the little boxes and the magic sculpt, these little sub-assemblies together. Because now I could just slide them into place. And that looks that looks pretty okay. Still have the left side of the vehicle, all the stowage over there to take care of. But you can see how this is starting to come together. And nice little color pops as well. So it's going to look really, really nice. Yep, that's good. Well, let's just fast forward for just a little bit here. We've got all the stowage painted now, so now it's, we can go ahead and just stick it in permanently. I'm using a little bit of white glue here because if for some reason I want to move something a little bit later on, well, that's going to make it just a little bit easier to pop off and maybe rearrange or replace or something like that. But everything just kind of sticks in there. Here's our ammo for a recoilless rifle. It's all sitting down in the bed of the truck, and if I did this right... The gun should just slide in there. I've made some little stands there over the seat, so that just locks in there. And, of course, the little front pedestal as well. And there we go. Yep. There we go. 
adding to the clutter, we have these deaf model little plastic bottles here. So we've got some soda bottles, we've got some water bottles. Let's kind of tuck those in there. Just a little bit of trash and garbage and clutter. But they all add to that appearance. I think <laughs> I, I like these a lot. And there we go. We're spinning vehicle. So we basically finished with the construction here. So now we can get take a nice look at this and see how it looks. And there's a few touches here and there we'll take care of a little bit along the way. But, you know, for the most part, we're ready to move on. So what's next? Well, what's next is a little public service announcement. If you are like me and are always looking for a little bit more inspiration, well, this is a great uh, YouTube page to go to. It's Diorama Devil. He does just fantastic work over there. Great modeling, great diorama work. So I encourage you to check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. Well, like I said, this is going to be an action-packed episode. There's a lot more still coming. So hang in there, guys, because we've, we've just got started. Well, the next thing we want to do is start working on our base. And need to kind of figure out the right size here. So just kind of place the model there on this piece of the pink insulation foam that I get from the hardware store. And... Something like that seems about right. Then I cut the size with my handy dandy hot wire cutter. Yep, getting some use out of that. And then I want a little bit of a raised road bed here. This is going to be a super simple scene. Noth nothing fancy here, but I just want a little bit of elevation, a little bit of character to it. So put a little bit of a rose ro raised road bed. Say that three times fast. <laughs> and, and then we'll glue that down into place. And then I'll just, I'm using a little bit of white PVA glue and just going to stick some of these toothpicks in there just to hold everything. And then I'll go find something else to do for the next, uh, I don't know what, two hours. Well, two hours later, I come back and things are more or less dry. Still a little bit slippery here and there, but I go ahead and take out the toothpicks, trim up some of these edges here that I eat, kind of just laid a little bit of extra terrain there, and then just tidy up just a little bit, not too much. I don't really need to do this, but just kind of taking care of business along the way. Like I said, this is going to be just a, an amazingly simple base. So I'm just going to start out with the road here. I'm just going to lay a little bit of the AK terrain. So this is the concrete. It's got a little bit heavier grit to it, so it makes a nice base. And then I'll put a little bit of an edge here just because, you know, I want a little bit of differentiation, a little demarcation between the road and what will be the the sandscape to the side here. And then over top of the concrete, I'm just going to add a little bit of asphalt. And I'm doing that because this has a little bit finer grain texture to it. So between the two, I think I have something that looks pretty good. Once that dries, just peel back that tape and I have a pretty nice edge there. So definitely have a road edge. And then again, using the AK terrains, just adding a little bit of the sandy desert and the dry ground, dry ground first, and then over the top, the sandy desert. And then, oh, here we go. Yep, the blue bowl of good stuff. It makes an appearance, a reappearance. I've got a few stones and rocks in there that I want to grab, so just kind of plopping those into place and just gluing those down there. Nice, nice, nice. And then I've got a little bit of railroad ballast, just, again, holding that in place with a little bit of white glue, but this, this the terrain space at this point is still wet, and so I can manipulate it. And then onto the road bed, I just want to change the color just slightly. So I'm adding a little bit of color using acrylic paints and a little bit of dustiness here and there. Just again, using acrylic paints, a little bit of, little bit of engine grease and grime on the road here, just using some oils. And then of course, we pick out some of those stones using acrylic colors just to give them a little bit of pop of color and brightness there just to make them kind of twinkle a little bit. And then finally, just to make the sandy appearance just a little bit more convincing, well, just some pigments just kind of applied here and there. A little bit of scatter across the road as if maybe the wind has blown a little bit of the dust across and a little bit on the road itself. Yeah, just kind of kind of anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Part of the scene is going to be this little bit of a concrete barrier roadblock that I quickly painted up. That's from Panzer Art. And just a little bit of a sand blown around the base of that as well just to kind of integrate that into the scene. And now for the big surprise. Up until <laughs> just a few hours ago in real time here, I was not going to put a figure onto the space. I wanted one, but I could not find one. And then I found something in my stash of old figures that I cut off the head, I cut off the hands, replaced them, did some surgery on it, a little bit of modification here, sculpted out a head scarf out of the magic sculpt. And don't pay attention to the blue scarf because, oh, yep, I'm going to change the color. Like I said, I changed the color quite a bit throughout this entire process here of, of, of this scene. But anyway, just 
painting up this little figure here. I think he's going to make a big impression on the scene. Camouflage pants, just kind of a khaki top there. Got his head scarf nice and bright. Another little pop of color. And I think he's getting close to being done. So let's go ahead and put this together here. So we've got our concrete barrier here for... Let's make, let's make this like a roadblock scene someplace, you know. So these rebels are sitting out there in the middle of who knows where. And this stretch of road, this guy's pulled up. He's just kind of hanging out here. Something comes while well, he's ready to shoot it down. Does he look good right there? Now yeah, let's put him over there. So face him that way just a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's the little things, right? <laughs> well, I think that's going to kind of do it for this one. Yeah, like it's a super easy, very simple base. That's that's for sure. But you know what? I like the way this turned out. Um, <laughs> it it kind of tells a story. It definitely is, it showcases the vehicle, which was which is the purpose of why we do these little scenic bases anyway. And I'm so glad that you know, my Patreon, they kept asking me, you know, are you going to put a figure onto this base? And I said, well, I didn't have one. I didn't have one. But of course, I knew that it needed one. I'm so glad that I found the figure because I think it fits perfectly onto this and really adds to the scene. So anyway, we're going to call this one good. I hope you like it. It's a great kit. AK did a fantastic job on their just, you know, their inaugural kit out of the out of the marks there with this Toyota FJ43, this one, and also the hard top. I'm sure there's more kits from AK on the way, so look forward to those. They're great fitting kits. And until the next time, well, happy modeling, guys. Take care.